Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Do you love Jesus? Lift your hands toward heaven. Father, I love you. And tonight again, we give you praise and honor and glory. There's none like you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. Again, our hearts and our minds are open to hear and receive the word of God. And we thank you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Right there where you are, say, Father, Father. there is none like Jesus. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your presence. You know the Lord is in this place. He sure is. He sure is. Do you love God? Do you love Jesus? You glad to know him? It's wonderful. You know what? Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. Christ, you may be seated. Are you glad that you know Jesus? You're glad you belong to Him? The Lord is blessing me right now, right now. I can feel his presence and before he my bow I may not be able to say all he has done 
done for me, but the Lord is blessing me right now, right now. The Lord is blessing me right now, right now. I can feel His presence and before. blessing me right now right now you see to be blessed means to be favored it means to be improved it means to be increased it means to be promoted do you understand it means that God's grace is upon your life and so he's blessing me right now. I'm improving right now. I'm increasing right now. I'm favored right now. Things are working out for me right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Sit down for a moment. Hallelujah. Did you have a beautiful day? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. But you know, our faith walk is uh, living by a law of the Spirit. Faith is a law of the spirit. Faith is a law of the spirit. It is that law of the spirit by which a man can live beyond the three-dimensional world. Where you see beyond the material world. Most people live in the three-dimensional world. But there is a realm of faith, a dimension of faith, where things that are unreal to the material world are very real. You can touch them, but this time you're not touching them with your physical hands, you're not looking at them with your optical eyes, but with the eyes of faith. And when you see with the eyes of faith, you know they're real. And you know, the third dimensional world is more real than the Second dimension. Are you hearing me? It governs everything in the second dimension. And you know, of course, 
That second dimension governs the first dimension. The first dimension governs the particle world. The faith dimension, which is the fourth dimension, governs the material world. It's got to be so. The Bible says that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. The Bible tells us that the law of faith produced the material world that we see. It was the law of faith that produced it. Bible tells us that God is a spirit. And in Genesis chapter number one, it says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And God, who is a spirit, created a material world. He pre existed the world that He created. So, God, being a spirit and living in the spirit world, created the material world. And that tells us that the spirit world governs the material world. And the law of faith is a law of the spirit. And when you become a Christian, of course, you know, you, you cannot become a Christian until that faith is imparted to your spirit. The Bible tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And faith is an ingredient. It is wrapped up in the gospel of Jesus Christ. When the gospel comes to you, when you listen to the gospel, the message of the gospel, faith comes in it. And if you believe it, faith comes. You see, the Bible says with the heart man believe it. Every human person can believe the word of God. Because the heart is made to believe God. The heart of man can believe. But I told you believing and faith are not the same. When you believe, faith is imparted. Come on now. Faith comes from the Word of God. Believing is from your heart. When faith and believing meet, life resorts. You see, the children of Israel, the Bible tells us, could not enter in because of unpersuadableness. King James uses the word unbelief, but it means unpersuadableness. They would not be persuaded. What was their problem? That was faith. The Bible says they did not mix the message that they heard with faith. When you say, I believe, I believe, I believe. You can remain where you are until faith is imparted to your spirit. Faith causes you to jump. It reminds me of a little girl I was praying for in Johannesburg. And uh, we're at the healing school. And this little girl, probably about nine years old, ten, something like that. She could not walk. She was in a wheelchair. And uh, she had a brain problem. So, I laid my hands on her. With my hands on that girl, she was ready to work. So I said, bring her out. They brought her out. I held her, put my hands there. You know what she was doing? <laughs> she was doing this. Actually, when I got her out of the wheelchair, she ran. I had to pull her back. You know, as soon as I brought her out of the wheelchair, she ran and I pulled her back. And when I pulled her back, she wouldn't stop. She just kept doing this. <laughs> That's faith. She had set a time for her healing. She set a time. And that's one of the things we tell them at the healings. You got to set a time for your healing. You have to set a time for it. See, otherwise you'll not get it. She set a time for her healing. Didn't you read in the Bible that the children of Israel missed their blessing when Jesus came because they did not know the time of their visitation. 
they did not know the time of their visitation. Oh, how sad. There are people who pray and pray and pray and ask God for a miracle. They ask God for something. And then that thing comes and they don't know it. Kenneth Hagin used to say that for some people, even if the Holy Ghost walked in the street in a red hat, they still wouldn't recognize him. How true. Why? Because they walk in the flesh. Look at Abraham, a man of faith. Three men are passing by. He sees with the eyes of the Spirit. He says, Sars, please come over here. Huh? Before you go on in your journey, I want to help. Can I get something for you? I can make some food for you. No, they said, no, no, no. He said, no, you must come. What did Abraham see about those three men that were passing by? That's a man of faith. He knew the time of his visitation. God pretended to be passing by. According to the Bible, he was actually coming to Abraham. But he needed Abraham's faith to call him. You have to understand how God operates. How many times has God come to your house? How many times has he come into your room? How many times has he appeared to you in a dream? How many times has God spoken to you? And you did not know the time of your visitation. Abraham didn't miss that time. He said, Sars, please come. He persuaded them to come in. Got the, the, the wife to get the food ready. And serve them. Come to find out it was God Almighty who had paid him a visit. He came in the form of a man. Does he still do it? Emphatically, yes. The Bible says, be not negligent to entertain strangers. For some have entertained angels unawares. Many do not know the time of their visitation. Set a time for your, for your miracle. Well, you know, there's a, a dimension of the spirit that we are called to live in. It's a fake dimension, which is, I said, the fourth dimension. Haven't become a child of God, haven't become a Christian, now that you're born again, walking by faith is a necessary way of life. You cannot but walk by faith. And that's what Paul was talking about when he said, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Sight meaning sensory perception. We walk by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith, not by sight. It is our way of life. It is what we must do. You know, there, there are people who love God's children because they are not taught. They think that when you say, by faith, I have it, they go, oh, oh. That means you don't really have it. You see, they're wrong because they live in the realm of the flesh. So if you say, I have it by the faith of God. Oh, so I, I want it now. I want to see it now. Do you have it now? I, I don't mean you have it by faith. Oh boy. Which is more real? You see, they have not been trained to know that what you see by faith is more real than what you see with your optical eyes. They haven't understood that. They are living in the flesh. They think that what they perceive by their senses is more real than what they see by the eyes of faith. But what you see by the eyes of faith is more real than what you see with your optical eyes. For which cause we faith not. But though our outward man perish, the inward man is renewed day by day. Hallelujah. 
The 18th verse tells us, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things that are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. That's why he was not scared. That's why in that 17 verse says, Our light affliction, which is but for a moment, walk it for us a far more eternal weight of glory. He says, That happens while we look not at the things which are seen. We look not at the things which are seen. So the cancer is growing. We look not at the things which are seen. But at the things that are not seen. The things which are seen are temporal. This cancer is temporal. That means it's subject to change. It's described by that terminology in the Bible. It came to pass. It came to pass. It's on a journey. If it had an origin, it will have an end. Can you shout amen, somebody? It came to pass. Didn't come to stay. It came to pass. It's on a journey. Hallelujah. Why will look not at the things which are seen, but at the things that are not seen? Can you look at the things that are not seen? Oh, then you know you're a Christian. The Christian life is looking at the unseen. Hallelujah. It's the life that begins from the fourth dimension. Because you're born in the realm of the fourth dimension. The natural man is in the third dimension. But the spiritual man is born in the fourth dimension. Born a child of faith. He walks by faith, not by sight. Sight is the third dimension. Faith is the fourth dimension. When you're born again, you're born into the fourth dimension. Then you're ready to begin to grow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, children are selfish. When you're in that fourth dimension where you've just started, you may live a little bit of a selfish life. Not selfishness is the cause of sin. Are you hearing me? Where you're always wanting to gimme, 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 gimme. Where you're covetous. Where you do all the kind of wrong stuff. You're still a child. You're still sinning. He said, little children, I write to you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate. We got a lawyer, hallelujah. Counsel for the defense. Glory to God. Oh yeah. But then you have to grow. You put what you got to work. You know, they tell us that um, Jesus brought in a new law and that, that the, the law of love, which is for the New Testament. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The law of love for the New Testament. Yeah, that's correct. But you know what? We are born of the New Testament. The law of love is not a law for us at all. Ho, 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 ho. Did you get it? God is love. He that loveth not. Know it not God, for God is love. And when you are born of God, you are born of love. If you don't love, you don't know God. You are not trying to keep the law of the New Testament. Because now that you're born again, you're a new creation. This new creation is not in a covenant. Hey, yeah, yeah. How can, I, how can I make it strong enough? It's a family. You got to understand. Papa God is our daddy. Do you understand? It's a family. It's not a covenant. You know, there are people who are still talking about the strength of a covenant. They don't understand this stuff. I, I got something to share with you. Are you hearing me? That's for, you know, that's for the junior classes. When you're in the junior classes, Papa God has to teach you about covenants. You know, some people say, do you mean that everything we ever learned about covenant is wrong? Uh-uh. It's called the lessons for training. Yeah. Are you hearing me? When you come to the higher class, you don't talk covenant. Hey, hey. Yeah. 
Did you know that Jesus made a covenant with Papa God? Did you know that? Why? I want to tell you. It was because he had become a man. Are you hearing me? He became a man. And he identified himself with us. You got to understand the several things that Jesus Christ was fulfilling at the same time. He became a man. The Bible says there's one mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus. He became a man. And he got into this deal with the Father. To bring us into that oneness. So that we could have the right to receive eternal life. This was God's idea. The Bible talks about the eternal life which God promised before the world began. Do you understand? Not at the fall of Adam. Before the world began. God had a, a, a different idea before the world began. And so, here Jesus gets it. He gets it with this covenant with Father God. He gets it. And what's going to happen? Now he's going to die and he'll be buried. But God's going to raise him up. And when he's raised up, he's a new creation. So Jesus dies and he's buried. Then he's raised up the third day. And Papa God goes, thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Please turn this tape over for the continuation of this message. Now Jesus is born again. He's the head of a new class. This new class doesn't have a covenant with the Father. No, there's no need. <laughs> when Jesus was born again, he was a new man. The Bible says he was born out of death. He's the head of the race that came out of death. He heads a new class. This is not the class that was headed by Adam. He heads a new class. And this Jesus comes out. Who is he? Who is he? Who is he? Who is he? The fullness of the Godhead dwells in him. Who is he? The express image of the Father's person. Who is he? The effulgence of his glory. Who is he? The expression of God's personality with all of the beauty of heaven. Come on, shout amen, somebody. Who is this Jesus? Oh. Oh. Who is he? All things were given to Jesus. You know, Jesus loved the Father so much. And he proved it. He wouldn't do anything but that which the Father wanted. He pleased the Father. And so the father loved Jesus and gave him a name that's above every name. That I want you to notice that at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee should bow of things, he says, in heaven. In heaven. At the name of Jesus. Every knee should bow. Where? In heaven. Then in the earth. And in hell. See, to many Christians, the name of Jesus is just the name of a religious leader. They don't understand the name of Jesus. You need to learn to celebrate the name of Jesus. 
I mean, you shut your door, you are alone, and you start dancing about the name of Jesus. Do you understand what I'm telling you? You just shut your door. This time, you're not just you're not singing amazing grace, how sweet the sound. You you are dancing to the name of Jesus. You're celebrating the name of Jesus. All by yourself, just jumping. You know, all by yourself. Roll on the floor, all by yourself. What are you doing? Celebrating the name of Jesus. You're doing that in your room. Don't wait for church. Do you understand? This is something you've got to do on your own. You want to be an effective Christian? These are the things you must learn to do. You know, many people, when they are alone, that's when they think about everything they don't like. Everything that makes them unhappy, that's what they think about when they're alone. (laughs) But when you're alone, it should be your best time. Because now you can say what you want. You can shout as you want to. When I'm alone, I like to shout. I may not shout in a way that somebody else may hear me, but I know how to shout. Hey, go it! All by myself. Woo! When I'm alone, I shut the door. Now I'm telling you everything I do inside. Oh my goodness. And I go, woo, woo, hee, hee, woo, woo, woo. Just by myself. I don't have time to think about nonsense. I can do a dance around the dining table. Only me. Woo! Hallelujah! Glory! Glory! (laughs) You know, the life of God in a man is a miracle. It's a great miracle. And you ought to learn how to celebrate all the time. That's what God wants to see. But you know some people, they're always troubling heaven with their problems. Every time they want to pray, remember me. (laughs) The angels that God has sent to them are tired of them. They are hoping for a transfer. The moment you say, let's pray. Father, I'm here again. (laughs) Is that my problem? They cannot see what God has done. They are not living in the fourth dimension. They've been born into the fourth dimension. But they are living in the third dimension. How sad. Functioning with others, speaking the same language. When you live in the fourth dimension, your language is different. Didn't we read it? They that dwell therein shall not say, I am sick. They don't know how to say that. It's not in the vocabulary. I am sick. I am broke. Ho, ho, ho. How? I'll never be broke in my life. How could I be broke? Broke? Me? Broke? No. You see, you have to understand what's called the the mentality of prosperity. Hoarders are broke. You know who hoarders are? Everything they have, they want to keep and store, you know, because of a rainy day. Uh, 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 Because we might just need it sometime, you know. You can't just give out everything. How can you just give out everything? Come here. 
Didn't Jesus tell us it's more blessed to give than to receive? Is that true? Is that a fact? Is that real? Well, so why do we act like it's a lie? Didn't he say that if you give, it shall be given unto you? He says, give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give into your bosom? Somebody said, I never had anybody give me anything. There's a reason why. You are not a giver. When you become a reckless giver. Then you start understanding. Hallelujah. The blessing of God is upon your life. The protection of the Lord is upon your life. In your going out and in your coming in. The hand of God is mighty upon you. And God's countenance shines upon your face. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything you put your hands upon to do. Will prosper. Say amen. The power of the spirit of God. Will rest upon you. And take you from one level of glory to another. From strength to strength. From faith to faith. You will experience victory after victory. Victory after victory. In the mighty name of Jesus. We are blessed. We are favored. We are strengthened. We are refreshed. And we have received so much from the Holy Ghost. We are full. And we will do great things. By the power of the Spirit of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. To obtain similar messages, log on to www.christembassyonlinestore.org.